let's get straight to the point. For all my creative purposes, the GH5 is definitely still worth buying in 2021. My camera gear path is kind of different from a lot of people. I came from the Sony a7 III and the Canon EOS R, and they're both full frame. Now all my cameras are micro four third. I use the GH5 mainly for my A roll and B roll on this YouTube channel for product reviews and tutorial videos. And the first major reason is the image quality. The Panasonic GH5 is still one of the cheapest cameras that choose 10-bit 422 in 2021. If you don't know what 10-bit 422 is, basically it gives you more information in terms of color representation and shades of color. It gives you richer colors and smoother shades and color separation. Both the Sony a7 III and the Canon EOS R I had before only shoots 8-bit 420 and 8-bit 422, and I can't really imagine myself going back after using a GH5. This is especially important when you have a flat surface with a gradient shade. For example, a wall with a light shining from one spot. When you film with 8-bit, you will start seeing these bands or blocks inside the gradient shade that don't blend smoothly together. That applies to human skin too, especially when you have a harsh contrast on someone's face, and that is something you cannot remove in post. 10-bit gives you smoother highlight roll-off. The second reason related to image quality is the all-eye or all-intra codec that you can record with the GH5. This is very important if you don't have the most powerful computer to edit the video with. A lot of consumer cameras still only offer a codec like Long GOP, which is a compressed codec that saves space on your memory card. But the downside is it can slow down your computer significantly. Basically, Long GOP codec captures data in the first and the last frame of the video and compresses the frames in between to save space. When you edit the video on your computer, your computer has to uncompress the video by constantly asking for data from the first and the last frame of the video, and that's a lot more work for the computer compared to all intra. With the all intra codec, all the data is captured within each frame of the video, so the computer does not have to uncompress any frame because the data is already in each frame. This is the easiest way to have smooth playback and scrubbing when you are editing the video. Even with my fully spec'd out MacBook Pro 16 inch, sometimes it will drop frames when editing long GOP footage. The easiest way to remember is, the more compressed a video codec is, the worse experience on a computer you will get. Also, if you are filming something that has a lot going on, let's say you start off with a peaceful scene and a whole bunch of people starts jumping out within the length of the video, all intro will give you a much better and more consistent image quality because each frame contains its own data. For a static shot like a talking head interview, long GOP is fine. I know a lot of people will say that the main advantage of the GH5 will be the capability to record 4K at 60 frames per second. But to me, I have no complaint whatsoever when using 1080p on my GH5. It looks just as great even on my 4K TV. The most important thing to me is the 10-bit 422. So whenever I try to record in 60 frames per second, I go with 1080p 10-bit 422. The third major reason why I think the GH5 is still worth buying in 2021 is the in-body image stabilization. It is still one of the best on the market. I can easily use it for B-roll shots and make it look like I'm using a gimbal or a slider, especially if I add in some stabilization in post. Keep in mind, all the lenses I use are manual lenses without stabilization in the lens. So if you pair the GH5 with a stabilized lens, the dual stabilization will just be even better. The fourth reason is the lens options for the GH5. The Micro Four Third mount on the GH5 is definitely the most versatile mount I've ever used. You get so many different options when it comes to lenses. You can go with native Micro Four Third mount, which is what I'm doing, or you can attach almost any lenses you can buy with an adapter. Some of the mounts you can attach onto the GH5 using an adapter are Canon EF, Canon FD, Nikon F mount, PL mount, and a lot more if you go with vintage lenses. Talking about adapters, of course, we have to mention the speed boosters from Metabones and Filtrox that not only allows you to adapt third-party lenses, but they will also give you extra amount of light and a wider field of view. 
I used to adapt Canon EF lenses onto my GH5 using the Filtrox Speed Booster, but I sold them all and went back to native Micro Four Third lenses. And the main reason is because it gives me a more compact setup when using Micro Four Third lenses. I have used full frame cameras with full frame lenses before, and they're just a little too bulky for me. I know a lot of people will say that using native Micro Four Third lenses or even just by using a Micro Four Third camera, you will never get the full frame look with the super shallow depth of field. And that is so true. But my major focus is not to have the blurriest background possible. As I said in my previous videos, you don't always have to blur out everything when it comes to videography or photography. It is mainly a creative choice. A lot of popular films or photos don't have super blurry background that you can't even tell where the subject is. To be honest with you, I think sometimes people are paying too much attention and blurring out the background to a point that they kind of wasted the background. What's the point of filming or taking photos at an amazing location when all you see in the final product is a completely blurred out background that looks like nothing? So using a Micro Four Third camera like the GH5 with native Micro Four Third lenses actually encourages me to film more things because of how small the setup is. I can carry the camera all day long without any complaints, and that makes me happy creating more content. I think that's the most important to me. All the lenses I own now are mostly manual lenses except one, and I think I'll need to make another video about my lens collection. But there's one set of lenses that I have to talk about because they are one of the major reasons why I think the GH5 is still worth buying, and that is the Siri anamorphic lenses. They are about $800 each, and I know they cannot be considered as cheap, but they are definitely super cheap when it comes to anamorphic lenses, because no matter if it is for full frame or micro four third cameras, anamorphic lenses are usually at least over $2,000 each. Being able to film with anamorphic lenses at such a low cost is just amazing. I was using only the Siri anamorphic lenses to film a couple of dance videos, and you will never believe the feedback I received. A lot of people actually picked up and liked the anamorphic lens flare a lot. And I'm talking about normal people who has no idea what an anamorphic lens is. That is one of the most surprising and rewarding moments of my freelance videography career. I'm actually very proud of owning an anamorphic setup. Another reason why I think the GH5 is still worth buying is all the built-in tools that come with the camera. One of my favorites is the waveform monitor. It makes it so much easier to expose the image the way you want. I even wish they can have a waveform monitor when you are taking photos, because as hard as I try to learn about the histogram, waveform is still much easier to see and understand, at least to me. The second tool I use a lot on the GH5, you might be able to guess it already, is the built-in anamorphic de-squeeze function. It allows me to see a proper image when using an anamorphic lens to film instead of looking at a weird squeezed image. The GH5 is still one of the very few consumer hybrid cameras that has such a function. If you know another camera that does the same thing, let me know in the comment section below. I know you can de-squeeze the image by using an external monitor. Even my $100 monitor can do that. But the GH5 can do it internally, and that still blows my mind. I can literally film with anamorphic lenses by having just the GH5 and the lens, and that is awesome. Remember, this is a very small setup that I can carry around like a regular DSLR camera. The next reason is the ability to customize the camera. There are so many buttons on the GH5 that you can customize to almost any of the functions you can find on the camera. But my favorite is the custom modes. You get five custom modes. C1, C2, C31, C32, and C33 that you can customize and save literally everything when it comes to camera settings. We're talking about the ability to save something as small as a specific ISO level to a custom mode. With all my cameras in the past, the Sony a7 III, the Canon M50, and the Canon EOS R, I don't remember being able to customize and save settings in custom mode like the GH5. This feature on the GH5 is definitely one of the most underrated selling points that I use every time when I'm using the camera. Another built-in feature of the GH5 that I use a lot is the full-size HDMI port. You'll appreciate it once you have used a micro or mini HDMI port. 
I've used them both on the Sony a7 III and the Canon EOS R. I literally broke a micro HDMI cable on set with the Sony a7 III and I was not able to use my monitor at all. Trust me, a full-size HDMI is much better in terms of durability and stability. That's it. Those are the reasons why I think the G5 is still worth buying in 2021. I know it is a four-year-old camera, but if it is still good, it's still good. I got the GH5 a couple of months ago at full price, and I think it is still worth it with all the features that it offers. So if you can get it used, it will be even better. Let us know what you think about the GH5 and if you think there is a better option in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.